Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon one and all. Today we will be discussing a very important topic connected to the tongue. The tongue, as you know, is a gift of the Almighty. It is very small in size, but it can create so much havoc and it can cause so much damage that more than any other organ of the body. So it's important for us to know that the Almighty has created this tongue. You know, some scholars say so beautifully, he has put 32 guards that are so sharp around that tongue so that we think 32 times before we actually utter. And it's amazing how the tongue is so small, it moves a thousand and one times in a minute up and down, and yet it does not get cut by these sharp knives around. This is the gift of the Almighty. So consider it a gift. Use it as a gift. And the reason we say this is to concentrate more on a specific department of the use of the tongue, and that is when it comes to those we mix with, beginning or starting with our wives, our husbands, our family members, our relatives, and then those we interact with, our friends, and so on. What we should know is that the tongue has several different uses. One of them is to taste food, one of them is to speak, and there are so many other uses of the tongue that are there. Some we may know, some we may not know. It's amazing. However, remember your respect as an individual is very closely connected to how you use the tongue. This is why the messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, every morning all the organs of the body call out to the tongue and say, fear the Almighty regarding all of us. It is through you that we are known, so be careful what you say. Amazing. Which means I have hands, I have legs, I have a brain, I have eyes, my whole body, my entire image, my identification. I am known as a good or a bad person based primarily on how I use my tongue. Have we ever thought of that? So if I use it correctly, I will be known as an upright individual. If I lie and swear, use vulgar language, scream and shout, they will know me as a bad person. But my legs have not committed a sin, my hands have not committed a sin, my hair and all the other parts of my body have committed no sin. The sin is committed by the tongue. And the tongue, yes, closely connected to the brain and all that, yes, correct. But ultimately it was the one used to relay what was within. This is why if you're not sure, don't speak. Speak when you're sure. Think about it, think twice. I'm sure we've all heard the saying, you've been given one mouth and two ears to speak half that of what you hear. So you hear more and you speak less. Sadly, a lot of us love to speak. And we just want to say anything and everything, no matter how it sounds. Not realizing, did you know, it is an act of worship to think before you speak. You're actually rewarded, an act of worship. The Almighty becomes pleased with us when we think before we speak. And not just think, but think of how many different ways there are for me to portray or to say what I have in my heart to convey that message. If I've got five different ways of wording it, I need to select the best, most effective, most beautiful manner, and then I will speak. And if I speak using that best and most effective manner, I will automatically be able to please my maker. And I will definitely cause or create lots of harmony and peace in my surroundings. So very importantly, let's use the tongue correctly. Number one. Number two is not only the selection of words, the tone as well. Very closely connected to that. Some people scream and yell. They shout. Shouting will reduce your respect. The more you yell, the less people respect you. The next time you say something, nobody will want to listen to you because you're used to screaming. And this is the whole reason that we say, speak with a tone that is audible, but a respectable term, meaning respectful tone. You will find, and I'm sure we've all seen this, when someone has a habit of speaking with a calm tone and always relaxed, you will notice immediately that the minute they open their mouths, everyone is silent and listening. Whereas when you have another who's always yelling and screaming, everybody's yelling and screaming with them, no one knows whether they are serious or not serious. And imagine if you hear a person yell or scream who has never ever done that in his or her life. Automatically you would know that this is something very important because this person does not use this type of language or does not scream. Amazing. So 
this is the importance of the use of the tongue, how it gives the whole image of who we are just by its use. Sometimes a whole company can come crashing because of a CEO making one statement that is negative or bad. And there are examples of that in, in history where we've seen this happening because of the abuse or misuse of the tongue. The same way a man who, is, who has always been respected can lose all his integrity within a split statement because of how bad it was and how evil it was. So we need to be careful. You are known by your tongue. Let us be careful how we use this tongue. We'd like to give a few more examples. Within the home, it is an act of worship to say words, to create the words and to utter words that will bring about a smile on the faces of your children and family members, your spouse primarily. Did you know that it is actually an act of worship to come home and utter words of goodness, sweet words, beautiful words, make people feel appreciated, make them feel wanted, make them feel the bond, and it is the tongue that makes us really connect to one another. And this is why we say it is an act of worship. So many people do not realize it's a charity to say a good word. A good word is a beautiful charity. We come home, we're silent. Silent, being silent is something that's not good, especially when it comes to those who are waiting for you to say something of your own family. A good word. Yes, when there is a problem, you might want to remain silent for a moment. If you think that that is the best way of solving the problem for now, you might want to speak a little bit later. But even when you choose to speak, say the best words. This is from the messenger. May peace be upon him. And we always tell people charity begins at home. Sometimes we are very careful of our tongues outside the door. Whereas when it comes to in the home, those who work for us, those who live with us, those who are the closest to us in terms of family and so on, they are so worried of us opening our mouths because every other word is a swear word. Every other word is a lie. Every other word is a word which is derogatory, defaming, which is disrespectful, which causes hurt and harm. Why should we do that? A good Muslim will never utter words that are hurtful to others. There is no need to do that. Even if you disagree, dis if you disagree with someone, you do not need to utter words that are hurtful to them, belittling them, making them feel like they are not worth it. Sometimes maybe this, the good statement from your mouth might actually make them change their minds and come on to what you had because you were so good. You came forward so beautifully. This is the religion. This is what we have been taught. Now let's ask ourselves, do we as Muslims really follow these teachings? We call ourselves Muslims. A lot of the times we swear so much that even those who are not Muslim are embarrassed. And it gives the wrong image of the teachings of the beloved messenger. May peace be upon him and may the peace be upon all the other messengers. We shouldn't be doing this because we have the responsibility of portraying the correct image of the teachings of the Almighty. And these teachings primarily begin with a good tongue. The messenger, when he was sworn, he, didn't, he did not swear back. He never swore back. The swear words never came out of his mouth. He says, a true believer is not he who is vulgar, is not he who speaks hurtful statements, is not he who lies, is not he who utters words that are hurtful to people, words that are incorrect, unjust. So we need to learn from this. Let us learn to be honest, tell the truth. For indeed, to lie would be a burden on the shoulders. And it would be a very, very grave burden on the day of judgment. We should not be lying. We should not be hurting people's feelings. I hope I've said a little bit to motivate people to use their tongues in a better way, starting with myself and then everyone else. Remember, choose the best words. Choose the best expressions. For indeed, to do that is a great act of worship. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.